Hey guys, what's up? It's Shinobi Ranger here and just two days ago on April 14th Age of Empires released the trailer for their new DLC The Dynasties of India the, the third DLC for Age of Empires 2 Definite Edition Woo, we am stoked about this I've been, I've been watching clips and movies and you know what, when they released it I was oh so impressed, so happy I was really, really, really very happy that finally the Indian civilizations are getting some love and attention. Okay, so let's go, let's go. I've been watching this trailer for so long. So it's been, what, so it's roughly, it's been, already been two days when this is being released on 16. So it's two days since it's come in. Let's watch the trailer. Come on, let's go, let's go. been an adventure and it all began in Transoxiana the melting pot of Persian high culture and nomadic traditions I tell of warriors and weapons faith and fury the greatest ruler of the Pala dynasty Deva Pala as a newly crowned ruler my father took the name Raja Raja when I return to Tanjavo, Raja Raja will know what his son is capable of. Wow, that was amazing. That was amazing. Okay. Alright, here we go. Uh, okay, before we go ahead, this is the first time I'm ever reviewing something like this. Okay, so please don't mind if I make some mistakes in between, but let's go in, let's dive in deep. Okay, explore history in all fits. Okay, three new civilizations, each including new unique units and technologies. Nice! Battle your way through three new campaigns spanning across India. Uncover betrayals and reclaim your lands while immersing yourself in the stories of history. Earn 23 new achievements on your Xbox or Steam account. Full is below. Dynasties of India will be released on the Microsoft Store and Steam on 28th April 2022. So that's about 12 days from now. Three new civilizations, the Bengalis. Okay, let's, let's look at this. Navigate the winding rivers and dense jungles of Bengal as you build a thriving army to fuel unstoppable armies of elephants. The Bengali unique unit is the Ratha, a sturdy chariot that can switch between melee and ranged attack modes. Ooh. So the Bengali is here references to the Pala dynasty of Bengal which ruled around this point of time. So this is... Uh, so let me give you a bit of backdrop. So this is bit after... Uh, this is the period after... The, the rule of King Harsha of Kanauj. Okay, so 16, uh, sorry, 625, 625, um, or it's 600, I don't remember. King Shashanka of God, God, okay, modern day Bengal then was called God. The God kingdom dies, and there is utter chaos. It gets so bad that people get fed up of this nonsense which is happening in their land. And they decide to hold an election in 750 CE. This is like 1200 years prior, right? In 750, an election is held and the person who is elected to rule over Bengal is a general named Gopala. Okay. He establishes the Pala dynasty of Bengal. And during this time, Bengal experiences a golden period of literature, culture, everything. And this campaign uh, it is gonna focus right, it's gonna focus on let's 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 worry about campaign later on. Okay. So the Bengalis focus on elephant and naval units. Bengali elephants in addition to benefiting from a strong okay 
anti elephant bonus blah 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 unique technology pikes okay so cross bros rathas you know let's not read this let's read this okay civilization bonuses so we are considered an elephant and naval civilization which makes sense because historically speaking during this period of time when the guruj okay the uh, the palas were coexisting with the gurjar pratiharas and the rashkutas you had the cholas in the south as well so this is this common period where all these dynasties are flourishing and we are considered an elephant and naval civilization okay because according to history at this point of time during the 11th early 11th century uh, so this is when the palas of bengal are considered to have the strongest elephant core in their armies the gurjara pratiharas are considered to have the finest cavalry whereas the rashtrakutas of the deccan have the finest infantry so this makes a lot of sense so elephant units receive 25% less bonus damage correct it's going it's in sync with their um, theme more resistant to conversion yes this makes a lot of sense because elephants are very slow in the game and you can easily convert them with your monks town center spawn two villagers when the next is reached this is huge this is really huge the more town centers you build let's say you have four town centers at the end of feudal age and you get eight instant free villagers you don't need to spend food for it you don't need to spend 50 food for one villager take what um build time so 30 seconds i guess to spawn your villagers from a town center you just get eight on the spot free villagers which is which is really it it's a big bonus okay you cannot i cannot describe it to you in terms of how it works okay the thing is let's say you have four town centers and you produce these villages first thing is first you need 400 food so there itself you are saved with 400 food you are also saving nearly a minute of time or something okay wait what is the okay let, let let's do this what is build time of villager in ev2 okay let's just see this yeah 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 how long does it take train villager okay 25 seconds 25 seconds so coming back here let's say you have eight villages coming out from four town center so you take 50 seconds for two villages you are getting a good return okay let's say you have one town center and you have to spawn eight villagers you are going to take 50 50 seconds for two so that's 200 chance so a little over 3 minutes for eight villagers even if you have four town centers you are spending 50 seconds and 400 food for each villager you are just getting it like smack damn when you advance to the next stage and that that is going to affect a lot the uh, effect may be minor initially but if you are comparing with your op with your opponents you are having eight villages from the get go of as soon as they advance to the next age so that's a very good bonus ships regenerate 15 hp per minute okay this is yeah in keeping in sync with their naval civilization that this is a naval bonus okay now in case you are wondering what this is about the palas right okay unique units buildings and technologies the ratha okay the ratha is a bengali unique chariot that can switch between melee and range attacks oh good 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 it's so it's strong versus infantry weak versus skirmishers and camel riders yes okay yes camel riders have a bonus versus horses okay armored elephants anti building cavalry unit oh this is something like that flail elephant which is in age of empires 3 you don't recruit much because you have siege elephants in age of empires 3 resistant to most range attacks okay makes sense we courses melee units yep something like a ram but a uh, living ram cannot be converted from by any okay so this is like a siege this is this is acting like the ram and it is being it is functioning as a siege engine this i mean you need okay so uh What is it? Wait, wait, wait. What is it? Name the technology which take a way to a VM. Horrible typing. Which 
stack enable two converts siege. What is the name of the tech? Ah, damn, I'm not getting it. I don't remember the name of the tech tree, uh, the specific tech, but this see, it's behaving like a siege engine. See, this is the thing, it is a unit. It's, I, I'm a bit, I'm a bit, uh, I'm on a fence here because the elephant is not okay, it, it is performing, it's it is performing a siege role, but it's not a siege elephant. Okay, this, this, I do not know what to say i have no idea okay so the unique text for the bengalis are the pikes what is the pike what is a pike no 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 not this okay here we go pike system pike system system corvi labor Okay, Corby labor, all right, on this economy of okay. home. This is medieval Assam. Okay. Mm. In this system, adults and evil males called Pikes were obligated to render service to state from its militia and return for a piece of land. Oh. Okay. Okay, but hold on. Ratas uh, this wait, wait. This is a bit weird. Okay, so here the pike is okay. So what I can assume this is the pike is okay, it's a type of corvy labor. So what corvy labor means is you don't have to pay taxes. So this is prevalent during the three kingdoms in China. Okay, Corvi labor and many Southeast Asian countries where you could you are exempted from paying tax if you perform Corvi labor. The labor you perform is considered your the tax you owe to the kingdom. Okay, okay. So Pratas and elephants. Okay, so maybe these pigs are commissioned as chariot charioteers and elephant mahouts. Therefore, you get 20% faster um, attack speed. Mahayana Buddhism. Okay. Yes. Uh, during this time, uh, Mahayana Buddhism flourished in Bengal. The Pala rulers encouraged and propagated Mahayana Buddhism. So, this gives villages take 10% less population space. Right. That makes sense because the more villagers you have, uh, you're, you're booming your economy up and... If they take 10% less space, so instead of, so when you say you have 100 villagers and they take up 90 pop space, you're getting 10 pop space free for your own uh, benefit. You can use it, that pop space for maybe recruiting troops or whatever. Okay. Trade units yield 10% food in addition to gold, right? Yes, this also makes sense because you know what? Elephants are expensive. They're very, very, very expensive. And considering the focus is on elephants, you will need a lot of resources. Okay, let's go to the tech tree. Um, can you zoom in, please? Okay, here we go. All right. Let's see. This is the emblem for this one. Okay. Oh, oh. So this is the emblem for the Bengalis. Elephant and naval civilization. Elephant units. Okay. So you've seen this. Let us scroll here. Okay, let's look at okay barracks archery ring. Okay, uh, you have the full lineup here: archers, crossbows, arbalesters, elite skirmishers. You don't have hand cannoneers. Hmm. Okay, no cavalry archers. The elephant archer, which was in pre pre previously the Indian civilization unique unit, it's become a non-unique unit, a regular unit. Uh, so you have elephant archer available in the archery range and upgrades to an elef elite elephant archer. You don't have cavalry archers. Okay. Well, that's what makes sense because if I, um, let's go to, 
government of India, right? Okay, this one. Uh, no, 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 that's not right. Hold on. Map of India. I want images. Here we go. Can you like open this in a new tab? Okay, let's zoom in here. All right, and I will open. this as well okay now this should make it easy all right if i zoom in here so this is the extent of the pala dynasty all right and bengal today's west bengal is here okay now this region here this whole region here it is tropical wetland because if I zoom out, so this is the Gangetic Plains. These are flat land, flat areas. But if you come over here, you see most of the rivers, the entire Ganges, the Ganga river network system. And from here comes the Brahmaputra river. Both of them merge and they form a huge waterway. And they break, they break up into the mouths of the Ganga here, the Ganges Delta. This is a lot of tropical wetland. So this is where the Sundarbans are located. Uh, the Sundarban reserves, the reserve place, the Sundarban sanctuary. And this is the home of the Royal Bengal Tiger, the only tiger to inhabit these swamp plants. Okay. And here you have Assam, you have the Northeastern states, Assam, Meghalaya, Mizoram, um, Nagaland, Tripura. Okay, this during this time, this whole region is considered Assam. Okay, at that time known as Kamarupa. So this area here, from here onwards, following this bend down south, let's zoom out. So from here and down here, towards um, that times, towards today, towards Today, today's uh, Thailand, Cambodia, Khmer, and then the southern parts of Vietnam, it's all tropical dense forest. The weather and the climate is such that the vegetation is such that you cannot have horse, too many horsemen. Elephants are needed here, not just for the military, but for civil work as well. Construction work, moving through those dense um, areas. Uh, sparsely populated areas which are not connected properly and moreover you have adequate resources natural resources to maintain those elephants therefore that was one of the main reasons why the burmese did not have many cavalrymen it's not that horses were not present they were in there in limited numbers okay and in this sort of terrain this marshland over here you primarily rely on infantry and elephants okay the weather is going to be pretty bad. I mean, it's going to be humid, moist, and this wetland here, it is going to be a veritable area of disease. Okay, so the same topography and the same geography and climate can be fed all the way across here. Thick jungles, that is why elephants were mainly used alongside infantrymen. Because these elephants were easy to maintain. Uh, you had ample lot of greenery around you to feed and maintain these elephants. And one more thing is, these elephants were like lifelines for these people. Lay all sorts of transport, construction. Just from domestic to military purposes, elephants could be, uh, bre uh, could be bred, reared and maintained easily in these parts. Okay, let's go back. No cavalry archers, that's, that's going to make sense. No thumbring because you see their unique tech. The pikes enable Rathas and elephant units to attack 20% faster. So if you have thumbring, your troops 
get really good archer units become really accurate and they fire faster you have parthian tactics is good okay barracks militia right, the whole lineup including pikemen including the spear line good 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 no supplies uh, okay squires arson let's go to the stables okay in the stables we have light cavalry we have bloodlines husbandry but no cavalry look at this no cavalry no camels no step lances only the battle elephant yes also i forgot to mention that the battle elephant which was there only for the burmese the rise of the rajas expansion pack for them it was already there but now they'll be included in the indian subcontinent because elephants were uh, an integral part of the in ancient indian ancient and medieval indian armies and again since your geography is this hold on let's get rid of this since you are having such wetlands here consume in further you cannot field and maintain horses and cavalry effectively okay that makes a lot of sense that that's why they that is the main reason why there is no cavalry here okay let's continue okay and see your trap no ramps armored elephants so your armored elephants are uh, they are upgraded to siege elephants so these are your living moving battering ramps which destroy buildings what else okay they're missing the final upgrade siege on azure threat of a concern these siege on azure can be deadly no bombard cannons uh, okay it would be it would have been good but oh well since well since you're having these elephants you expect them to do heavy lifting for you blacksmith wise all techs are there except plate mail armor that's going to sting on a bit like that's minus 1 and minus 2 armor for that's what's minus 1 melee and minus 2 pierce armor for infantry okay not too bad not too bad Bit, but okay, not too bad. That's okay. And the docks, I don't know why you don't have heavy demo ship. Maybe it'll get overkill because you remember they have the tech where the ships will regain fifteen HP per sec per minute. So maybe to counter that, you have careening, you have dry dock ship, right? All the important techs are there. It's good. In university, everything is there except bombard or. Uh -huh. Okay, you have siege engineers. Yes, arrow slits, architecture, everything is there. No bombard towers. That's okay. Okay, first unique unit, the Ratha. Ah, uh, that's only unique unit, the Ratha. Ah, uh, delete Ratha. Okay. No hoardings and no sappers. Ugh. Your castles are going to be a bit weaker because this hoardings is going to give what at least one thousand HP more. Mm, that's a bit of a shame. You don't have heresy, faiths. Mm -hmm. Okay, fervor. Okay, this atonement, herbal medicines, block printing increases range, illumination, faith. Okay, that's good. That's good. Add add that to your conversion resistant initial, which you have. You already have a uh, civilization trait, which is giving you extra conversion resistance. This is also going to be important. Heresy in Age of Empires. What does heresy do? I don't remember these things. Heresy. What does heresy do? Ah, uh, okay, okay. That's okay. That's okay. Then that's not a big problem. Okay, okay. And then. Oh, 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 slow down. So we are missing stone shaft mining. Okay, trade guard, caravan guilds, two man saw for the lumber camp. That's good. All techs available for the mill. Okay, that's good. That's good. So yep, as per namesake, this is good. Let's go back. Let us sit back down. There we go. Okay. 
Next, the Dravidians. Seize control of the lucrative Indian Ocean trade routes and utilize advanced metallurgy as you build one of the wealthiest sea empires of medieval Asia. The Dravidian unique units are the Urumi swordsman, a warrior wielding a scathing flexible sword, and the Tirisadai, a massive vessel that dominates the high seas. The Dravidians focus on infantry and okay, okay, cheaper barbs. I am not going to read all of this because this is going to be okay. So the Dravidians are infantry naval civilization. So this is based upon the Cholas of India, southern India. Okay, let's go to let's close all of this. Let this remain here. Okay, let me open up. I want images. Mm. Here we go. Okay, here we are. Okay, infantry and naval civilization. That's correct. What are their civil bonuses? So they receive plus two hundred wood when advancing to the next age, which is good. We are getting free two hundred wood, which you can utilize for building a dock. Or you can build archery ranges. You can build barracks. You can do a lot of things with extra wood. Fishermen and fishing ships carry plus fifteen food capacity. Okay, good. Barracks technologies cost minus fifty percent. That's a lot. That is quite good. That is really good. That's in keeping with their infantry upgrade. Skirmishers and elephant archers attack twenty five percent faster. Hmm, good. Okay, unique units, buildings, and technologies. Urumi swordsman, yeah, Dravidian unique infantry unit which can charge its attack. Oh, it's like the Custelier, the 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 the, the Burgundian Custelier who has which has a charge attack animation. The first attack is its charge attack, then armor attack. Strong versus building versus infantry, weak versus archers at long range. Okay, again you have the armored elephants. Same thing. Urumi swordsman, Urumi. So this is the Urumi. Zoom in. Okay. Uh, this is the okay. A uh, Dravidian unique warship which fires multiple projectiles. Strong versus warship. Okay. What is this? This is the day. The Chola Navy. Okay. Here we go. So this is the representation. Uh, this is history. Ah, here we go. Three said they. The heaviest class of. Ships which are compared model era battleships and battle cruisers, large and heavily armored. Okay, had extensive war. Okay, endurance. Dedicated force of four hundred marines board. Okay, reported to be able to take engage the Dharni class. Oh, okay. Three braids. Uh huh. Though all ships oh had employed a small marine force for boarding enemy vessels, Tirisadai's had separate cabins and training areas for them. Oh, nice. <clears throat> okay. Medical corps. Yes, the Chola armies during this period of time had a separate corps for their forces. Let's go to. Uh, this is navy. I want the army. Uh, no, this is. Uh, I don't want this. Wait, let's go back. Chula. 
military right here we go here we go Oh, where is this? I had seen this in this play. I don't remember where I have seen this, but personal bodyguard, elephant, core, arches, cavalry, light, infantry. There was a standing medical core for the Choda armies. They had a dedicated core of uh, physicians and medics that at that time. Uh, That is weird. I don't. I I recall seeing this, but I don't remember where. Okay. So elephant units regenerate twenty HP per minute, which is great. Which is really great. Which is good. Okay. Add in a monk there, and you just amp up the rate of healing. Wood, steel, infantry, and cavalry attacks ignore our. Ooh, this is like the Lithuanian lightest. Okay. Let's go back. So what is wood steel? Okay, Woods Steel. So it's something like this. So this is Woods Steel. So this is what which is used to make that Urumi. Where is it? Where is that guy? Hey. Ah, here we go. So this is used to make that Urumi sword. And during this point of time, the Deccan had good um, smithing skills. The southern the Deccan region had very good bl uh, bladesmiths and blacksmiths who could uh, make this wood steel. I mean, it's 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 being revived. It's a try. They're trying to keep this revived so they don't forget it. Okay. Yeah. So how good is this? So wood steel was widely exported and traded throughout ancient Europe and the Arab world and became particularly famous in the Middle East. Uh huh. So considered the Indian steel as the best in the world. So as you can see. So as you can see, during this period, uh, the Deccan Khan, the Dravidians possessed excellent quality blacksmiths and metallurgists. So therefore, this tech makes sense. So they, so all your infantry and uh, your cavalry ignore armor. The attacks just ignore the armor, whichever whatever the enemy unit is facing. Okay, team bonus. Docks provide plus five population bonuses. Huh? Yeah, that's true. Naval civilization, that's why. Let's see the tech tree. Zoomy zoom. Okay. Now let's get in here. That's better. Okay. So, archery range, we have the full setup here, archers, crossbows, arbalests, skirmisher, elite skirmisher, hand cannier, good, no cavalry archers, yes, of course, no Parthian tactics, okay, but they have thumbring, so that's 100% accuracy for all units, they have elephant archer and elite elephant archers, yes, uh, man at arms, okay, that's full, the full setup is here. They have supplies, quite okay, standard. 
Oh my god, what is this? Only light cavalry, no camel riders, no cavalry, no bloodlines, no husbandry, what? No any battle elephants, just normal battle elephants. Oof. Okay, now why is that? It's because it's uh, go here. So I will zoom in. So this is the birthplace of the Chola dynasty. So you can see they are along the coastline. And if I'm right, this is the Coromandel coast. Right, so they, they are there from this part. Okay, from here. So uh, okay, let's close these. Okay. And you can see that their tech, their expansion took them across the sea to Sri Lanka, modern day Ceylon, sorry, Ceylon. And then they went all the way towards Sri Vijaya, the empire of Sri Vijaya had control of the Andaman Islands. And even the southern parts of Southeast Asia. So you can see this. So this, so this is Champa. This is the Khmer dynasty. So this is this is lot of naval conquests involved. Okay, and in the north you move all the way towards the palace of Bengal. So you are in conflict with the palace of Bengal. Okay, so this is the main reason why they are considered naval troops. And primarily in during this time you did not have too many cavalry in the south. Okay. Because till here is the Tekken Plateau. Okay. In the north, you have the deserts, the Thar Desert here of Rajasthan. And the full northern part is the Gangetic Plain, the Indo Gangetic Plains, which is flat land, ideal terrain, ideal place where cavalry can be used alongside elephants. You have that capability, you have that capability of doing so. But down south, when you come here, it is hilly, dry terrain. You have the western guards here and the eastern guards here along the Coromandel coast. And this is the, this is the, wait, wait, is this is the wait, hold on. Okay, this is the I don't want this. I want okay. This is appropriate. Let me just open this. I can't open this. Okay, no problem. I just zoom in. Hold on. Okay, you see here. So this is the Coromandel Coast. This is the Konkan Coast. It lost. Stupid ad. So you have the Konkan coast, the Malabar coast, you have the Coromandel coast here. Okay. You have the Western Ghats here. That is a line of hills. You have hills over here as well. So you can see there's a mountain range here. And you have the Western Ghats here, all hilly terrain here. And as you move north, you have more hill, you have dry terrain here, cracked the Deccan Plateau here. Okay. So this is a place where you don't have too many horses. Okay. The terrain, climate, everything does not allow you to feel the vast of horses. Because if you go north, okay, let's just head north. Okay. This is the Vindyas and Satpuras. They, they split the country in half. Okay. And over here, you have the Great Indian Desert, the Thar Desert. This full stretch is the indo gangetic Plain all the way. This is complete flat land, very, very fertile land. This is dissected by, by a, uh -huh. this is bisected by a lot of rivers. It's just cut across very fertile soil. And, and as you move towards today, present day Bangladesh. Okay. I 
think I have to zoom out or not. Right. So here we go. We come near the Hazirabagh Plateau, and this full thing here is wetland. This is the home of the Palas. Okay, and this is where Sundarbans are located. So, so these areas are not meant for horsemen. They are not very ideal for cavalry. Okay, but this is abysmal, man. This is really abysmal. That is why you better have to perform well. Otherwise, you are done for. Siege factory, siege workshop wise, again no battle maps. That's why you have elephants. You have siege manager. Very good. You don't have bombard cans. Okay. Blacksmith, everything is there except plate biting armor. I mean, you, you don't have excellent cavalry, so your light cavalry is going to be further affected because you don't have husbandry, which is going to give you speed. You do not have bloodlines, which gives them plus 20% HP. Plus 20 HP, sorry, not 20%, 20 HP. Okay, the dock, it's fully fleshed out. Everything is there. You can see the whole setup. This is completely, everything is there. Since they are, of course, the Pitom of the Navy. The Tirusadai warship is available in the Imperial Age. Okay. Let's go to the university. We don't have treadmill crane. Okay. Don't have architecture. What? What is this? Come on, man. They have such good architecture. What do you you have bombard can? You don't have siege engineers. You don't have architecture. What do you mean by this? Come on, you're joking. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, you just see this. See this. Is this not architecture? Is this not architecture? You tell me, come on. The same temple, look at this. Look at this thing. You think this is not architecture? Okay? This is not architecture. You don't have skilled architects here. How do you build all of this then? Come on. Microsoft, people, get your facts straight. You can't build, you can't build all of this just like that, man. Come on. What do you mean they don't have good architecture? You literally have this. Wait. Yeah, literally you have this. This this is their crowning achievement. And you say they, they you don't give them the tech for architecture. What do you mean by this? Come on, this is not, not this is not a joke. Come on, include architecture. What are you doing? Okay, so castle, you have Urumi swordsman, elite Urumi. Okay, you have holdings, but no sappers. Uh. Okay, let's go here. No redemption. Oh, no illumination. No heresy. No fervor. What? That's not good. We have faith. Town center, everything is there. No gold shaft mining, stone shaft mining. Oh, it's a shame. And no crop rotation. Okay, so this one, yep, you're gonna have to rely on your infantry, primarily your infantry and your navy. Ay, 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 ay. what is this? Most of it is right, makes a lot of sense, but I disagree that they don't have architecture. Come on, really? Okay, let's go back. All right, the last sieve. Okay, the Gurjaras, the Gurjara Pratiharas, right upon swift mounts, okay, of, on right with swift mounts across the fertile fields and open plains of western India and unleash, unleash diverse armies of sturdy warriors upon enemies. The Gurjara Unicans are, okay, let's come down. So, they are considered a cavalry and camel civilization, okay. Started two forage bushes, that's plus 250 foot off the bat. Can garrison mills with livestock produce food? Okay, this it depends on the rate of food being produced. You can garrison them, but uh, if the rate of food which is coming in from that is decent, which is I have accepted. Mounted units deal 50% bonus damage. Okay. Can garrison docks with fishing ships? Okay. I don't know what this is what to protect them. Uh, whatever. Unique units, the chakram thrower. The chakram thrower. 
the Gurjara unique unit, infantry unit, which range when attack, okay. Strong versus infantry, weak versus archers and siege weapons. Hmm. Sri Vamsha Rider, Gurjara unique light cavalry unit which can dodge projectiles. I don't know what you mean by dodge projectiles. Strong versus archers, weak versus spikeman and camel riders. Of course, they have that huge bonus versus cavalry. Camel scouts, okay. A unique scout unit which is, you know, strong versus cavalry, weak versus spikeman, monk and archers. Armored elephant as usual. Okay, unique text. Kshatriyas, the military class. So, Kshatriyas are the warrior class akin to you could say knights samurai not exactly the king the ruling class the nobility royalty and the soldiers the military the army are kshatriyas their primary occupation is warfare and safeguarding their own people okay so kshatriyas military units cost minus 25 percent food that's good that's a great tech Frontier Guards, Camel Riders and Elephant Archers plus 4 melee armor. Okay. So let us close all of this. Wood steel also is not needed. Okay. Gurjara Pratiharas. If you. No, 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 Take comprises parts of Rajasthan today, has most of the Indo Gangetic plain here, all the way, including control over. The, so, this is in 980, the Palas of Bengal. So, you have all the northern territories. I think this river. Can I just show me that one? So it's on the way to here. This is not appropriate. I don't need this. I want physical map. If I download this, no, 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 hold on, hold on. I just want an online map. Ah, okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. So, this one is okay. Let's pull out this here. So, they are separated by the Narbada River and the Vindhya Mountain, Vindhya and the Satpura ranges from the southern part of India. Okay, so. In this case, you can see this is ideal terrain for cavalry and camelry. Because in Rajasthan, the Thar Desert stretches across Rajasthan, you need camels there because horses cannot survive as well as camels do in these deserts. Okay. Whereas here, the flatlands of the indo gangetic plains are ideal terrain for cavalry, hence their strengths. Okay. And frontier guards are usually camels. Because if you see here, when the Muslim invasions began under Muhammad of Mahmud of Ghazni and Mahmud of Gore, they came from this direction. Okay, so they came first through the Hindu Shahis of Kabul. Okay, they came through like this. So they entered through Rajasthan and through through the northern part of India here. Okay, so this is where the enemy, the Gujar Pratiharas would have had their camel riders moving around to uh, guard their frontiers. If that makes a lot of sense. Camel and elephant units recruited 25% faster. Okay, that's great. That is really good. Let's see the tech tree. Okay, very, very small. Zoom in. 
too much of a zoom. Let me zoom out a bit. Okay. Oh, all right, here we go. Archery range. First thing we see, no arbalesters. Okay. No Parthian tactics. Mm, because, okay, you don't have cavalry archers. So, in our case, in the Indian subcontinent, when we are proficient primarily with melee weapons, okay, the light cavalry and horse archers, they were mainly of the Turks, when the Turks invaded or when the Arabs invaded, because their lands were not meant for heavy cavalry and heavy infantry. It was mainly uh, vast moving ar uh, armies which were fast moving, comprised entirely of light cavalry and of cavalry archers. So we are not famous for our cavalry archers, that is for sure, that's why you don't have this. You have tail champion, okay. Oh my god. No pikemen, no halberdier. They're giving company to the Turks. The Turks are not the only civilization now which don't have any anti cavalry unit apart from spearmen. Ooh, it stinks. 200 swordsmen as well. Oh man. Okay, let's go to stables here. Okay. So we don't have cavalry. Instead, we have the Sri Vamsha rider and the elite variant of the Sri Vamsha rider. Camel Scouts, this is our unique scout which is obviously going to dumpster scout cavalry. Uh, camel Rider, Heavy Camel Rider, okay. No hus Bloodlines is there, okay. Husbandry is also there. No Battle Elephants. Because in this part of the country, this is ideal terrain for cavalry and camelry. This part, the, during the in the Thar Desert of Rajasthan. Hold on. So you see the Thar Great Indian Desert here. So this is ideal terrain for cavalry. And all this is suitable places for cavalry because it's flat land. You don't have many bumps in the land, layout of the land. Okay. Okay, no siege on here, but have bombard cannons. House, okay, the same thing, everything is there except that, okay, it's, this is oh, a bit concerning. Let's go to blacksmiths, oh my god, no ring archer armor, okay, that's, that's the last year, okay, that's plus one, plus two, melee armor and pierce armor, blast furnace is plus two attack, oh, that's gonna sting, I mean, you already have such horrible spearmen that, not good. Your spearmen are not going to be good at killing enemy cavalry. You need to rely primarily on your camels to do it. So your cavalry are your elf, your cavalry killers. Ay, that's going to sting. You have good light cavalry, but again, you lack that last attack upgrade. Oh, man. And, okay, no fast fire ship, no unit can get. No dry dock. Oh. Don't have siege engineers, okay, in the university. Uh, don't have bombard tower, don't have arrow slits, okay. Fair enough, I suppose. Okay, castle, you have the chakram thrower, elite variant, the elite chakram thrower. All texts are there, which is good. For the castle, which is very, very good, 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 good. Let's go to this. So, we don't have faith. Oh, this is stinging. Should have faith. It, Resist conversion, don't have block painting, is going to increase the range. Okay, but everything else is there. But faith is lacking. Here, everything is there. We have all the upgrades. Gold, stone shaft mining. We don't have two-man saw, however. We don't have guilds in the market. We have all the food upgrades. This is good, the middle upgrade for food. It's good, good. So, you know, this seems to me to be primarily cavalry and camels. As stated in the description. Okay. Three new fully voiced campaigns. Babur. Nearly a century after Thamarlane's death, his descendants are still fighting for supremacy in Transoxiana and Persia. The youngest among them is Zahiruddin Muhammad, also known as Babur the Tiger. He dreams of restoring the crumbled empire, but another way of invading horsemen from another steps is about to change everything. 
In this campaign, you will play as the Tatars and Hindustanis. Okay, I have not yet seen the Hindustanis. Tatars, yes, makes sense because Babur was born in Fergana near Samarkand in Central Asia, Transoxiana. Okay, and then he, after he failed to take Samarkand, he decided to try his luck in India. Therefore, marched to India and then established the Mughal dynasty after winning the Battle of Panipat, the first Battle of Panipat in 1526. Rajendra Choda, okay, the son of Rajaraja Choda. The dread of inevitable corruption plagues the ambitious Rajendra Choda as he navigates the harsh political climate of South India. Can Rajendra escape moral decay as he expands the empire that he inherited from his father? Or his, is his fear of corruption the true enemy within? In this campaign, you will play as the Dravidians. Okay, makes sense, makes a lot of sense. Rajaraja Choda and Rajendra Choda brought the Choda empire to its zenith. It's a big deal. Ah yes, here we go, Devapala, the Bengali campaign, the Palace of Bengal. Guided by the teachings of Mahayana Buddhism, Devapala rules a rich right. So after Gopala uh, is elected the king of Bengal, God, his son Dharmapala continues his conquests and under Dharmapala's son, Devapala himself, the Palas of Bengal reach their zenith. And this is, it is during this time that the Bengali culture, the Bangla culture and Bangla script, the Bengali script is developed during this point of time. So this marks the high period of the Bengal uh, region of India. The Palas of Bengal reached their zenith during this point of time. Okay, however, as dangerous rivals are in his realm, the ambitious emperor, right, because the Palas of Bengal were at war with the Cholas to the south, who were approaching Bengal steadily from the south through Kalinga. And also you had the Gurjar Pratiharas to the west of the Palas, whom they are continuously at war with. Your squad, they are continuous squabbles between these empires. The ambitious emperor finds it increasingly difficult to balance his policies with his morals. Will the ends ultimately justify his means or will Devapala's power question as subjects or place the Bengali? So you have a lot of text here. Okay. So these are the new texts. Okay, now here we go. The Hindustanis, previously the Indians. Let's see what has happened. Yeah, this is available without uh, purchasing the energy of India. Okay, correct, correct, correct. This is the previous Indian civilization. Okay, this remains the same. Description the same. Oh, camel riders attack 95% faster. Okay, okay, instead of okay, now gunpowder units have plus one, plus one armor, plus one melee, plus one PS. Before it was camels which were having these. Can build a new one, a caravan serai in the imperial age. So, what is a caravan serai? Let's let's look at it. So, a caravan serai is a roadside inn where travelers could rest and recover from the day's journey. Okay, okay. They supported the flow of commerce, information, people across the network of trade routes covering. Asia, North Africa, and Southeast Europe, most notably the Silk Road. Okay. Let's look at unique units. Gulam. Slave. The Gulam means slave. Hindustani unique unit that thrusts its spear through multiple targets. Strong was the versus cavalry. Okay. That's the heavily armored infantry and the spear infantryman whom we saw. That's weird because. The concept of Ghulam, okay, I, because a Ghulam means a slave, but in case of the Moors, they had guard corps of these Ghulams who were loyal to them. Okay, Imperial Camel Rider, as you mentioned, that's another upgrade for from the Heavy Camel Rider. Caravan Sarai, economic building, heats and increased speed of trade cards in return standard. Okay, yep, this is good. Unit text, Grand Trunk Road, all gold, okay, this is replacing the Sultan's tech which was there initially. So the Grand Trunk Road is a major arterial road, so which 
this grand trunk road used to connect india with present day pakistan and afghanistan so it's a vital point of communication and it is through the grand trunk road that usually the arab and muslim forces came into invade so this is not just a civil life line it's a military life line as well and shatagni now gives hand can is plus 2 range it was plus 1 range now it is giving plus 2 range okay team bonus camels and light cavalry units plus 2 attack of his buildings um, okay okay let's see the tech tree zoom in okay let's look at this okay here we do not have our blasters okay we have heavy cavalry okay oh come on you given them cavalry and heavy cavalry archers but you did not give them parthian tactics dude what are you talking about those attacking forces which came in were comprised of light cavalry and cavalry archers primarily whereas the indian forces were primarily focused on melee spear and sword give them parthian tactics because they came from central asia oh my god if you are focusing this on the india the mughal mughal dynasty of india please give them give them parthian tactics okay barracks wise completely flushed out okay extra eagles got okay again why did you not give them cavalry oh god it makes sense that they don't have elephants because they were in the initial terrain and climate and geography of where their native was from their homeland was not here it was in persia and it was in the middle east where elephants cannot thrive but at least you can give them some form of cavalry they were not just coming in on camel back they had cavalry as well uh i mean the gurjar pratiharas had the shrivamsha rider because the shrivamsha was a special breed of horse which was could cover an ocean of sand quickly within a day but these people oh you are mounted you are coming in mounted the main reason why the turks and the arabs won against indian armies was because one thing apart from disunity we were primarily focused on infantry and lower tier cavalry whereas the attackers had mainly comprised of cavalry and cavalry archers god at least you could give them up to cavalier in case you don't want paladin or at least knights if you feel cavalry cavalier is overkill this is okay this is standard camel rider heavy camel rider, imperial camel rider which is great these are cavalry killers but you try to maintain a bit of authenticity in this case accuracy in terms of siege okay when they came in to the country obviously they are going to use siege engines they are going to adapt them okay no heavy scorpion shame blacksmith wise okay only the infantry is missing plate armor okay that's okay that's that's completely okay docks wise look at the docks wo no dry dock no ship right okay you are not a land you are not a naval civilization you are a land civilization makes sense no heavy demo ship no fast ship it's a bit weak that's a bit hurting let's oof no keeps no architecture no arrow slits no heated shot no treadmill crane what if you are basing this on the early mughals before they became the dominant power okay i will accept this to a certain rate unlike the case where the dravidians they are they are having such good examples of architecture and you people don't give it to them uh, it is not like that keeps arrowsets okay i feel this is already to be considered that these hindustanis are probably drawing a uh, scope from 
the Middle East. I will accept this to a certain extent. That's a lot of technology is not there. Weak against ships. Here, oh. So we have the unique unit, the Gulam. Upgrade to heavy Gulam. What? So you got a scorpion who thrust through multiple units. I don't know what to do. You don't have sappers. Okay, that's okay. But you have hoardings. It's going to give you 1000 HP more. No atonement, no heresy. Uh, okay, that's okay. We have the caravan Sarai in the Imperial Age. All right. And economy wise, everything is there except crop rotation. All right. That's right. That's okay. Okay. This okay makes a lot of sense. Makes a good lot of sense. But I need to state that you need to give them th Parthian tactics. Please give them Parthian tactics. Please give them at least knights because. They are not native to India. If you consider the case of Mughals, they came from Transoxiana, Central Asia, where cavalry was dominant, the Middle East. You are drawing influence from them. The Tatars had good cavalry. So at least a part of this should have a bit of cavalry at least, in my opinion. But let's, let's talk to the developers. Let's go back. Okay, and it releases on 28th April, so pre-order it now guys, make sure we get it. This is going to be a lot of fun. The Gurjaras. So that means the Prithviraj campaign is there in the D, Age of Empires 2 D. It may have the Gurjaras as uh, Prithviraj Chauhan's civilization. Hmm. Not ideal, but okay. I'll take it. I don't mind taking it. Okay. Anyways, that brings us to the end of this video, guys. I hope you find this guide interesting, and I hope you find found my thoughts valid, legit, and interesting. Right, my level best to make historical ties with things, so that I could make you people understand why. Are these texts missing? Why are certain things not there? Why are certain things present? I hope you found this informative and do share it around guys and I hope this will help you a lot when you finally purchase the game. I'm sorry, the DLC. Okay. Anyways, that's all for this video guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked the video, then leave a like. If you did not like the video, then leave a dislike. Share, comment and subscribe and make sure you hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new videos when they are released. Until the next video, this is Shinobi Ranger signing out. Bye!